Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. For this video, I'm going to be looking through this proof question here. Um, it's got three parts, and the, each part does follow on from the part that came before. Um, but what I'll probably do is tackle each of these in separate videos, because I think each of these results are, are worth looking at in and of themselves. So. Uh, for all of them, we all start with the starting point of letting A, B, and C be greater than zero. And then part A says to show that A cubed plus B cubed will be greater than or equal to ABC times A on C plus B on C. So what I'll do in this video is tackle this first part A, and then we'll take a look at part B and part C in follow-on videos. So for this part A, let's uh, just note what we're being asked to show. So we want to see um, A cubed plus B cubed being greater than or equal to ABC times A on C plus B on C. And uh, remembering this is all starting from the point that A, B and C are all greater than zero. Now, um, uh, what I'm about to show is, is basically the steps that will get us from, um, I guess, something we know for sure to this result. Uh, in terms of trying to work out, well, how do you know to start there? How do you know to do that? Um, something worth mentioning is that what you can do when you're given the result is you could, for example, take the right-hand side um, expand it and start working backwards from this result and seeing where you end up because where you end up could then become the starting point for the proof to get back to this result. Um, it's kind of not necessarily the most mathematically robust thing to do because you're kind of assuming that this result is true when actually what we're trying to do is prove it. But from a kind of, um, I guess, test taking perspective, if you if you were to see something like this on a test, maybe that's a handy technique, like somewhere separately from your working, just kind of start to play around with this and see if you end up with something that you know for sure. Because what we're going to do with this proof is start with something that we know for sure. And something I know for sure is that a minus b squared would be greater than or equal to zero. And I know that for sure because anything squared, whether it's positive or negative, will end up being um, greater than or equal to zero. So that's a good starting point. And from there we can expand this. So we'll go a squared minus twice the product plus b squared would be greater than or equal to zero. And uh, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll um, do something that might not seem obvious, but I'm going to say this minus 2ab, I can actually just split into two bits. And we'll see why that's handy because um, over here we've got this ab. And if you did use that technique I mentioned of working backwards from where you're wanting to end up, you'll see that all of these c's cancel. So over on the right hand side there is an ab over there, so it's helpful to I guess break this up so that we can bring one of those ABs over rather than just bringing both of them over. So I'll do that now. So we'll get A squared minus AB plus B squared will be greater than or equal to AB. And now what we want to kind of think about is you may recognize this as being part of um, the result for expanding um, the sum of two cubes. So um, maybe just over here I'll note a common result that you probably want to have in your toolkit is that a cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b a squared minus a b plus b squared. So that's something that I think we can take advantage of because we've got this part here on the left hand side. We want to get a cubed plus b cubed, that's where we want to end up, and the missing link here is a plus b. So maybe what we can do is uh, kind of multiply top and bottom by a plus b. So let's do that. So we'll go a plus b 
a squared minus ab plus b squared uh, divided by a plus b to make sure we haven't really changed anything on this left hand side. So that's greater than or equal to ab. And we can do this, there's no risk that we're dividing by 0 here because we've got a, b, c greater than 0, not greater than or equal to. So it's never going to be the case that a plus b is equal to 0. So um, that, that's something just important to note. So maybe I'll note that this is OK since um, a plus b would be greater than 0. Alright, so now we can make use of this result here and we can just insert that in. So we'll get um, a cubed plus b cubed on a plus b is greater than or equal to ab. And let's just bring up this ab because we want a cubed plus b cubed all by itself. That's going to be greater than or equal to ab a plus b and we're really close here because we've got an a plus b here and an a b the only missing link is c but if you notice we've got a c outside the bracket and a c under each bit they effectively cancel so we can we can actually just throw in a, a c divided by c so we'll go a b c divided by c a plus b and again this is okay um, since we know c is greater, oops, um, c is greater than zero, so we're, we don't have a divide by zero risk here. But now we can then say, well, that's um, a, b, c, and I can bring this denominator inside. So we get a on c plus b on c. So that's our um, a cubed plus b cubed. And that's as required. That's what we were being asked to show. Panic boom! All right. So again, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, if you were to kind of start from this point and start playing around, it's very likely that you would have essentially gotten these steps in reverse and hopefully ended up with something like this, which becomes a valid starting point because this is true. This is something we know for sure. So it's almost like an axiom that we can use as the building block for our proof. Now, it might not always turn out so nicely, um, um, but it's always worth a try to, to see, well, can I take this result and manipulate it and end up with something that, that can form a valid starting point for a proof? So in this case, it did work out. And so the proof didn't end up being too too troublesome. I, I mean, um, as long as you knew your sum of cubes result, you could kind of get there, uh, noting that you need to be careful with, um, with uh, ensuring that you're not accidentally doing anything illegal like dividing by zero, but we were okay in this case. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, if you did find that explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.